So for my first roadblock that I've come across as I'm looking at the manual and the parts is the clear parts as you can see here. During the course of the build, I have to put some clear parts inside the um, main body of the ship and on the bridge. I can do that, but then I would have to paint them green. Clear green, as you can see here. I could easily put them on and then with a lot of lot of tape, I can tape up the, um, as a matter of fact, I'll use this for now as a reference. I can tape up all this and then spray paint it the clear green. But then I would have to re-tape them up all over again so I can re-spray paint the body. See, that as a double work for me. So what I want to do is I want to spray paint this first. Once they're done and I put them on this on the ship, then using Tamiya uh, masking tape, I cover them all up very easily, except for the, the cannons. I don't need to do that. Just the here, here, and here, and on top of here, and then respray paint it over the initial color, the, the main color. So I began reviewing all the clear parts that come here. So let me break this down. This is the side parts here, the the observation deck um, clear parts. You have the main bridges here and here. You have this part that's in the middle of the ship. So I don't know where, what it signifies or what, where it um, lights up or anything like that. You have this part here. As I was looking at it, it actually is one of the um, observation flight deck. Um, uh, posts or command posts that's in the back of the ship under the um, uh, catapults. This one goes in the middle of the body of the t of the um, conning tower. This one as well. This part here is the wave motion gun door. This one is Captain uh, Odaka's uh, command bridge or you know um, officer um, station, which is going to be the one part that I'm going to be removing from this tree and I'll explain why. As I was looking at this, and give me a second while I carefully remove this, I can pretty much spray paint it on this clear piece if I want to. But for this, I don't want to spray paint it and then end up removing these two little parts here, <clears throat> which of course will show off um, the bad scarring. So I'm doing this now, then carefully, carefully clean up a little bit of the um, excess plastic here. Clear parts are very, very difficult to clean up, and of course, clear. Use the um, use a hobby knife to clean it up. Don't sand it down. You're gonna abrase it, and then that's it. You ruin the clear part. And now that I'm done with it, I'm going to put it on this on this uh, alligator clip here. Put it right under there, so I can then spray paint it the clear green. Of course, I have to go a little further now because now, if you can look here closely, there is a um, there's a line there that goes here and here. Again, I don't know if this manual shows. But there's a um, there's a line that goes up there. I guess I can spray paint it, and then using the Tamiya tape, I can then cover it up here, here, and here. And then <clears throat> when I airbrush the kit, I paint up the lining here and here. Makes sense, right? Be a cool idea. So. The only uh, parts that I need to spray paint are these because they're, I don't have to worry about it um, cutting it off and, and damaging it. I don't need to spray paint this one because this represents the thrusters in the back, the conning tower, so I don't need this. I don't, don't need to spray paint this, 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 and this. The rest needs to be spray painted and it can be done on the tree. Therefore, this is what it looks like before spray uh, airbrushing. And here it is, now all painted clear green. See? However, there is one noticeable difference that you guys are probably not aware of, which I had to figure out firsthand. 
clearly when you spray paint paint sometimes you'll have some rough edges and if it doesn't spray fine and detail sometimes it won't look right on clear parts it will it's pretty much more evident to show that you know it's going to be painted so what I did was I flipped it over and I sprayed it from the inside so it has the shine on the on the clear plastic on the outside as you can see here let me give you a better view of that as you can see it's clear from the inside not from the out you see same thing here in this section I painted from the inside so it'll, it'll show out this one there was no way of doing it either way so I had to do it you know all over the place and then this one here and the canopy of course I had to do it from the inside for this one and for this one as well I had to be painted inside and then of course I'll cover it up later on alright so I'm gonna let this dry and then we're gonna move on to assembly okay so here are the first set of parts that I'm going to assemble of the um, 1500 scale uh, Yamato battle, space battles of Yamato and we're going to start with putting on the these and they're in a specific shape and I think over here that goes like so so it looks like that as you see there see the effect that was showing to you before that's nice with a um, little to me um, masking tape I'm gonna cover up these so that way they don't get it they don't get painted over when I airbrush them now according to this I take this part and it doesn't tell you which position it is to, to put it in. So you want to put this one like that. Okay. Followed by this one over here. This one goes like this. Uh, correct. Next one, like this, like so. Then we have this one, which of course, according to the manual, this has to look like this in the end. All right, so I'm make sure I'm double checking everything that sticks down like that, that sticks in like that. And that is like that. And then I close it up in the opposite end. For all intents and purposes, I am not going to glue this kit. Not yet. I want to make sure everything falls into place and it looks good. Plus I want to double check something. Then we have this part here. That you slide in like so. Aha! I knew I forgot something. The edges. I didn't sand them down because I didn't think about it. Since they're not going to be exposed. But now that I might slide it in here. I might as well. I'm trying to remember at what purpose or scene that these parts, that these, this section was for. Uh, it's like a little tray that comes out. Eventually, I'll figure, I'll find out soon enough. All right, so that's this section of the kit is now complete. All right, so the next part of the uh, manual says to build the lower part of the hull. And the first thing you would want to do is take this part and put it on here. The reason why I'm saying this is because these two parts goes over this, and I'll show you in a minute. Line it up properly and bring it down until it's nice and snug. 
There we go. And then, you take this, put it in like so, until it goes in all the way. And here's the other one. Wow. I'm not even done with this kit yet and I'm starting to see the ship the this ship take, you know, looking pretty good. Then we have this part here that goes like so. Nice. And then we have the assembly of the wave motion gun, which is uh According to the manual, let's see. It's to go like that. So it looks like this. And then I put it in like that. So it looks like that. I did a little sanding here to remove the nubs here and some sanding down here, but surprisingly there's no nubs here, so it's a nice clean um, part, as you can see. I I'm not seeing any problems whatsoever. It I think I see a little flaky here, which I may want to pass with the, the hobby knife, but uh, yeah, this come out pretty good so far. I want to point out something quick. I don't want to waste too much time. As you see, there's the... Um, the clear part, which represents the wave motion gun. If I want, I could probably find a way to drill a hole here and put an LED light all the way here and then feed the wires all the way through here. There's enough, there's a lot of space here to put in lighting and whatever. And at first I thought maybe we could, I could put the battery compartment here. But as I was reading the manual in that section over here, you know that spacing that we saw the um, where the fighter bay used to be? And I'm thinking that maybe they may come out with uh, some sort of aftermarket part that I'll put on for your kit later on. You can put the battery compartment there. I'm slowly thinking about it. I have not committed to it yet, but let's continue on with the build and see how far we can go with this kit. So... I had to remove this part from the front of the ship and just look at it and say to myself, why is this part clear? I can understand if you want to paint it and give it a different tone of color, but with the, with the, after being painted, the darkness and the shading and the light source is not going to be viewable pretty well, especially if the front, the, the front part of the, of this, of the kit that goes here is going to cover this up. Um, you're not going to see anything. You know, it's going to be completely, completely dark with only a glisten here. And I know for a fact that this needs to be illuminated. Therefore, I was experimenting with some light source, mainly this. This is a three millimeter LED bulb. Uh, which I graphed on two wires here, and I was testing it out to see if it works. I had a couple of um, battery size, um, you know, these type of batteries, and I was trying to look. For, well, actually, to tell you the truth, I was trying to. Uh, I couldn't find them, and I used a. I accidentally used a nine volt battery, not realizing that this is actually a. Of uh, uh, a three millimeter LED that's rated at three volts. Putting a nine volt battery will fuse out the bulb, so this is completely worthless. And I cut these these wires for no apparent reason, which I'm going to now remove from this and use it on this little guy, which I'm going to test out. These are 1.6 LEDs that I purchased a long time ago, and I actually put it... Was it... Did I put it on this? I believe... No, I don't think it was this, but I could be wrong. 
I put this on the uh, draw C, on the uh, mono eye of the draw C. And I've been thinking of doing this again for other kits, but last year I didn't do it. <clears throat> and I think, you know what, it's high time I start doing this. Uh, Alright. So, to understand how powerful these LEDs are, let me test one out here so you could see it. Look how powerful that LED is. Things blind you. And if I put it here, I get the desired effect. So, I'm going to put this on the Yamato. 